Hey, welcome back to My Mondays. My name is Daryl Bear, and today I'm going to be talking to you a bit more about the type tool. So last week we started off doing this animation of the word motion using the type tool that was newly introduced in Maya 2016. And this is part two of that. So we're going to build up this effect a bit more. And we still want to maintain the procedural nature that the type tool brings to the table. So the editability that the type tool has. So um, if you haven't seen part one of the video, basically what we did is we built up a second piece of geometry that's the neon tubes that's floating in front of the orange word that had the ability to um, receive all the information from the type tool, so the editability. So if we did something like, you know, change the font or change the, the text in the font or in, in the type tool, you know, the neon tube basically automatically gets uh, updated. And because we use the animation node that's built into the type tool inside of Maya, you know, any changes you make um, to the text will automatically be updated into the animation settings that have been done there. So we want to build upon that and keep the same idea going, but instead of this time um, building a second piece of geometry that has a relationship to the first piece of geometry, we're actually going to do some modeling edits or some topology changes to that orange word and still maintain that um, the ability for the text to be changed. So still keep that kind of procedural workflow intact. And to do that, we're going to be using the node editor uh, a fair bit. So I'm going to use control space bar just to clear out my screen and get to a full screen here. And we'll bring up the node editor. So the first thing that we're going to do is just go ahead and graph in our type here. And there's some stuff that we don't really need to see. These are a bunch of the function curves that are used to animate that guy. We can just hide those and those nodes down there we don't really need to see. And we're going to concentrate in on the type node. And basically the type node is sort of, this is where the 2D, the font comes in. It's, you know, you set up the letting, the kerning, all that type of stuff on that type node. It actually has the ability to um, also control the animation. So this is really the main workhorse. If you look in the attribute editor of, of the type tool inside of Maya. Now, really what this node is doing is it's actually feeding things like this type extrude. The type extrude is actually just a vector extrude node. And you can see when I highlight that guy in the outliner here, it looks the same as the parameters that we have in the extrusion section. It's actually just feeding that. So it's, this is sort of redundancy inside of the node inside of the attribute editor. So this type extrude node is really the node where, um, the 2D object becomes a 3D object. So if we look at our components that are that are basically coming out of this guy, you can see that we have the mesh kind of coming in. That's the 2D the 2D font essentially, the vector the vector information coming in. Um, so if we just you know, we'll we'll switch our name over here so you can see. So that's a, that's a vector extrude node, and that has the ability to feed out components. So you can it separates out the, the caps. Um, the bevels and the extrusions. So what we can do is we can basically hijack this guy, right? So we're going to introduce into this, um, we'll just kind of switch our filter here so we can see our shape nodes here. We're going to introduce in another extrude node right after this auto project. So basically what happens is this extrude node, we'll just kind of expand that guy down and we can hide that guy. We don't need to see that or this stuff. That shell deformer is where the animation happens and we don't need to see that. So. We've got our 2D objects. It goes into a vector extrude. It turns that into 3D stuff. It goes into a poly remesher. This is what turns it into the deformable mesh. If you wanted to have it, you know, retopologize so that it can, can bend and twist and stuff like that, then we apply some UV. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce right here in the chain a new extrude node. Now, the thing that's kind of cool about this is this guy, these out components are just getting um, component arrays. So it's grabbing all the faces that are in the caps, the bevels, the extrusions, and that has the ability to update dynamically, right? So if I change the font, the face count changes. So we can actually use uh, modeling, Maya modeling tools and feed it with these components that are coming out of the extrude node. So let's see what that looks like in action. So if we just hit type or tab key and just start typing the word extrude, you can see we can grab the, um, the poly extrude face, pretty standard tool inside of Maya. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab um, a couple things and rig them in here. So if we look at what's going on with this guy, the output of this node, feeds into the end mesh of this. So that's what we want to do is we want to introduce this into the chain here. So the first thing that we're going to do is just go ahead and say show all. So you right mouse click on top of that, say show all attributes. And this is going to be a giant long list of stuff, right? So I'm going to filter out a couple things. The first thing that we're going to do is just type mesh. So as soon as I get Emmy in there, you can see that it's, it's, you know, the only words that have mesh in it are input mesh. So we're going to put that into the input mesh. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to grab, so the extrude, um, it needs an input mesh and then it needs a selection of faces to extrude, right? So then we're going to do components. So if we start typing COMP on there, you can see now it's got these input components. So what do we want to do? Well, what I want to do is I want to extrude something off of this face. You know, I've got, some, it's, you know, the, the standard Maya bevel tool is going to give you, you know, a, a, an extrusion that you could have a profile on, a bevel that you can have a profile on, and then this face. And we can't really do anything fancy to the face with that vector extrude. So what I'm going to do is grab those cap components out and shove those into the input component. So that, you know, that looks sort of like that guy. We can 
compress that down. And then now all we have to do is take the output of this. So if we just go back to um, type output, as soon as I start to do that, you can see there's my output node. And we're gonna put that into the end mesh. So we've just substituted our chain here. So now we've got this extra extrude node on there. So if we start to do something like give it an offset and give it some thickness, there, there comes our, our new extrusion and that offset's going to, you know, flare that guy or, or, or scale that guy down. So that's pretty sweet. Now, obviously I could start to chain together as many of these modeling operations as I want. Pretty awesome. Now here's where it gets really interesting. This vector extrude node actually has a lot of really cool flexibility. It has the ability to do extrusions and bevels and change the profile. So instead of replacing what we're doing on those faces or those caps with this polygon extrude face, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this chain now with a vector extrude node. So if we just go down to here and hit our tab key one more time and just start typing extrude, you can see there's that vector extrude node down there at the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna not use that guy, we're gonna use this guy. So again, if we just say um, hit five or, or say show all components, let me move my screen up here so you can see what I'm doing show all component, all attributes. So that whole list comes in again, it's a big long list. So the one that I'm looking for on this guy, the name's a little bit different on the vector extrude node, but it's, it's essentially it's the, it's the input mesh, right? So we're gonna grab the input mesh um, of this guy. So we're gonna grab the, uh, the output of that and put that to the input mesh, pretty straightforward. And now we need to get the components that we wanna work with. So again, we're just gonna grab those cap components. So now we'll take the, um, the mesh output on this guy output mesh on this guy, so into the end mesh on that guy, and boom, just like that, we're now using this as our as our extrude, and because it's got, you know, um, a couple of extra options, you can start to do some stuff that's really, you know, really pretty cool. Like we could give it something like a, a cup, right? And then give it some divisions to work with and turn off the, uh, the fraction. Uh, extrude offset and it's going to make these sliders work a little bit better but you know you start to get something that looks you know very very different than what you would get with the standard Maya you know once we start to daisy chain a couple of these extrude nodes together you can start to get some really really cool effects so we'll turn on this front bevel again if we turn off that um, that offset or that fraction uses fraction you can see that you know we've now got something that you just you couldn't get any other way which is you know pretty pretty awesome now the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is you can you can you know you layer more of these guys together. So there's no reason why we couldn't hit our vector extrude one more time and do something maybe on on this part, which is the old extrusion, right? Like this 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 profiling shape right here that's kind of coming up. I'm just going to type extrude on this guy and grab another vector extrude node and shove that into the chain. So one last time, we say show all attributes. We're going to get to the input mesh from this guy. Uh, input mesh is right there, so we'll kind of zoom in here. We're going to grab the output mesh and go to the input mesh there. Very straightforward. And then uh, let's just lay this all out here. And then we're going to go and grab the components on this. So this time I'm going to grab the extrusion components. So we'll grab those guys and put those to the input component. So now if we want to see the results of this. We're going to just do output mesh. So if I start to type out on that guy, you can see there's the output mesh. We'll shove that in there and Whoa, that's a crazy extrusion. So let's just kind of, you know, uh, we'll leave the divisions high, but we'll, we'll, you know, do something like that and extrude depth on that guy a little bit less. So we get this nice little extrusion happening here. You know, it's looking pretty cool. I might want to go back to this guy and um, tone down a couple of the things here. So if we scroll back here, this front bevel is a little extreme. It's kind of blowing the tool out a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here to that bevel, and I'm just going to I'm going to decrease that bevel that bevel distance on that guy and make it a little smaller. So it's going to have just a little a little uh, a little detail there, and then we get this this new bevel that's kind of you know I'll turn off the depth of field so that looks a little easier. So you can see that we've got this new shape here done with this extrude, right? Pretty cool. Um, let's just go ahead and grab that extrude too, and now we can start to increase the distance on that guy a little bit, you know, do something like that. And if I wanted to, you know, I can give it a crazy profile. I could give it give it a profile like this. It's going to kind of cup out and then, you know, increase the number of divisions on that guy. So we've got this this kind of second tier happening here of that guy. Obviously, it's fully editable, right? So you can, you know, you can start to really just do some some very interesting shapes with this very, very quickly. Now, the last thing that we want to do, I'm just going to put this to a straight um, little champ dad on that guy. We could also turn on this bevel and then, you know, turn that guy off there and then just kind of 
crank these values down so that it doesn't blow that that type apart. But you start to get the idea of how you can really start to you know build up shapes that are you know much more complicated than um than you could get with just a simple Maya extrude node. And then the beauty of this is obviously if we turn on our time slider and we update our animation. You know all that stuff is going to come in and still just work, still just be um, procedural, right? So if we go back to uh, our text, which is, uh, let's just do a focus on this guy and go back to that type node, you know, change this guy. It just all works, right? So that's that's really the key. That's really um, the power of the Maya uh, text tool inside of inside of 2016. You know, it's fully uh, fully procedural, completely editable, and you can hijack a lot of these nodes or use standard Maya modeling nodes on top of it. So one more quick thing that I forgot to mention. Um, one thing that's really, really pretty cool about working on the faces is if you if you look at what we've got going on here with this extrude node right here, you know, once I started to round that face off, if you want, you can really overdrive that bevel. And the thing that's, that's kind of cool about this, and I'll turn on the display of the wireframe, is you can get these very nice soft domed effects just on the face of the type, which gives it that little specularity pop. You know, all these little rounds, all these little edges really give that nice specularity pop. But if you don't want a big bevel on the front of your face, you can just push it right to the point where it starts to overlap so you don't, you don't lose your holes there. But basically what you're going to get now is, and I'm going to drop the extrusion depth a little bit on this one too, a little further. What you start to get is just this very subtle little um, little trick on the face that gives it this look of, of being um, just ever so slightly curved, ever so slightly rounded. It's very, very cool. And it gives that face just a little bit of pop, just a tiny bit of little extrusion distance. So do something like that and then just sort of crank that guy down like that. And now what we've got, if we get rid of uh, get rid of our display of our wireframe and maybe give this a few more divisions just, just so that it can, you know, have something to work with there. Oops, wrong one. I gotta go to this, this vector extrude. I'll give this guy, you know, like 15 divisions or something, a fair number of those guys. What we end up getting is, and we can turn off the extrusion there. We don't need that guy. We'll hide this just so you can see what's happening here. We get this very, very little subtle um, edge, you know, kind of added on to, added onto this, onto those faces. So you can see as I move this around, you know, you get that little bit of highlight, that little bit of specularity rolling across those faces um, of of the text, and it just looks, it looks super sweet by giving it just that little bit of flatness. So, or chain, take, taking that face that was completely fat, flat and just giving it a tiny, tiny little bit of little, um, you know, beveling or, or rounding that goes across the whole face right into the center. And then this, you know, so it kind of goes from the, from the edge to the center and then from the center back down to the edge. And to me, that just makes the type have a little bit more pop to it. You know, as you move the light around there, you're going to get that specularity kind of rolling across the surface a bit more. So I think that's really, really pretty sweet. And the last thing that I wanted to share, it's a bonus. So if you guys took the time to actually stay to the very end of the video, um, you know, you, you get the little bonus thing because most people probably won't stay this long. But if you did, check it out. It's really cool. Now I'll kind of I'll pop that a little bit more so you can really get a sense of that specularity rolling across those faces now with that, that little bit of rounded edge to it. So that is basically the end of the video, the second end of the video. Again, everybody, thank you so much for watching Maya Mondays. Take it easy.